Hi, Pat. Thanks for taking the time. Um, I have kind of a specific question for you. I believe it was the first quarter of the Spurs game, but you guys were getting back on defense, getting set up, and you kind of like nudge PJ in the right direction. I don't know if you remember that particular scenario, but why is that just one example of how important it is to have each other's back? Um, you know, it's honestly, a, I think, a great thing as far as communication, like having a new guy, having a guy who, you know, he's a great defender, he's a great player, but he's only been here for, what, 48 hours, something around there, 72 hours. So um, it just puts that much more of an emphasis on our communication. And, you know, in a game, and especially now the fans are coming back, which we love, uh, you know, you sometimes you don't hear them. Sometimes you don't, you got to yell, you got to yell, but sometimes you got to just, you know, help your teammate and, and move them physically to that spot. And, um, but it really helps all of us, I think, because we all got to be at another level from a communication standpoint, which, I mean, look, it's going to help PJ, but it's going to help all of us because at the end of the day, our defense with how much we move, how much we scramble, how much we have each other's backs, um, you know, communication is one of the most important things. And while you guys are in the middle of this run right now, what do you think has become the team's identity? Um, you know, I would say getting back to what we pride ourselves on, and that is defense. And, you know, uh, the offense will come. I think, you know, the Philly game was a perfect example of that. You know, our offense was stagnant. And I know everyone's, um, you know, been on the offense. How do we become better offensively, offensively, offensively? But I'm pretty sure our offensive numbers are – pretty high from a league standard. Um, but it's our defense that kept us in that game. It's our defense that allowed us to um, give our offense a chance to come back and put us in a position to win that game. And I think when you look at our lineup, when you look at the different lineups that we're able to have out there on the court at one time, you know, whether it's the starters, whether, you know, we go small with Giannis at the five, you know, whatever it is, we have so much versatility when it comes to the defensive end that um, when we are all moving, scrambling, communicating, talking, having each other's backs, which I think we have been over this last little stretch, uh, I think we're a tough team to beat. Lastly here, um, you talked about going small, right? Giannis at the five, and that kind of includes you in that lineup. How do you feel about coach really using you in a lot of clutch minutes lately? I feel great about it. You know, uh, that's something I pride myself on is, you know, making winning plays. And, you know, coming into the season, I want to be more consistent uh, in general, but more consistent with that and, and being able to help the team in different ways. And, uh, you know, for me uh, personally, it's been shooting some nights. It's been rebounding and defending um, other nights. And it's been a combination of both, hopefully every night. So uh, it's it's been great. It's been fun. It's been something that, uh, you know, being here for my third year, playing under coach for my third year, but playing with a lot of these guys, a lot of our core group for a third year, um, it's great to take that step forward, and we still got obviously work to do personally and team wise. Um, you know, I, it's crazy that it's it's almost April. April is the last full month of the season, and then you get into May and you go to playoffs. Like, there's not as much time left before playoffs come around, so it's important for us to hone in um, on all the different types of lineups and uh, make sure that we're at our best as that the season comes to a close. Jim Mozarski. Pat. Um, to kind of rewind it a little bit, obviously this format being strange, we couldn't ask you the other day about uh, PJ actually being brought to the team. So um, I know Wednesday night in Philly was was strange, uh, I'm sure, to, to have that happen pregame. But once, you know, you found out who was coming and what he could do, what did that maybe signal to you? What was that vibe like of, of that kind of player in, in the front office, you know, making that decision, I guess? You know, it, it adds a toughness to us. It adds a defensive level. It adds a little more versatility. It's a guy who's a great, you know, locker room guy, great veteran guy. And obviously, you know, it goes without saying, um, you know, it's the nature of the business, right? Like you hate to lose the guys who you've become close with, um, you know, throughout the last few years, throughout this year, um, whatever it may be. And we wish them nothing but the best. But as far as what we're doing and how we're moving forward, I think PJ is a great addition. I think it's something that allows us to really, you know, put ourselves in a position to do more on both ends of the floor and, um, you know, continue to raise our defensive uh, levels. Well, along those lines, I mean, you guys at the start of the year weren't shy about talking about the end goal. Um, and Drew reiterated that the other night where he said, I mean, this type of thing can, and, and that type of player 
can help us win a championship. I mean, is that kind of, I know that's been the goal, but does that kind of reinforce that uh, if you needed it, <laughs> that, that idea of like, this is what we're here to do this season. Yeah. I mean, of course, I mean, it, we're here to get better each and every day. And I think obviously, you know, we know what our goals are and we know what our end goals are, but at the same time, those goals don't just happen. They don't just pop up. Right. So there's work that has to be done and, and getting PJ is a great piece to what we need, but it's also something that now we got to lock in and make sure we get him up to speed with everything we're doing. We got to make sure that everyone's on the same page. It's the same thing at the beginning of the year when, you know, we were coming into the season and everyone just kind of thought it was going to click. And that's not the way it works in the NBA, especially in a season like this where um, there's not as much time to practice. There wasn't as much of a preseason. The season itself isn't quite as long. Um, so it's about making sure that we're locked in, we're focused, and we're in a position similarly to we were, you know, the first year I was here where there's a chip on our shoulder and we know that, you know, we're together in this and it's about keeping it, um, you know, in our own grasp, if you will. Lori Nickel. Hey, Pat, today is a big day in Wisconsin. A lot of people became eligible for the COVID-19 um, vaccine because of the stage three rollout. What have you guys been told in the league? I mean, do you kind of wish you were next as well? Or are you willing to wait? Or what's, what's the latest on that as far as you guys getting vaccines, if you want them? Uh, to be honest, I, I, haven't, I, haven't, I haven't heard. I haven't paid a, a lot of attention to it as, aside from just knowing that it's, you know, really important. It's something that, um, you know, I think there's, we, we've been at least educated on the vaccine itself with some of the misnomers that came out and some of the worries that came out and um, how well it's performing, how important it is, um, you know, that it is available now to, to more and more people. And I think we want to make sure that um, we're at least spreading that word and making sure that the people that are able to get it, um, you know, are continuing to do so. And we're not, you know, taking away from that because we want to make sure that, uh, you know, fans are healthy and safe and everyone around, you know, basketball obviously is what we do on a daily basis, but uh, the health and safety of everyone around us is of, you know, the utmost importance. So I think we're all really excited that it's continuing to expand and the state of Wisconsin has opened it up for, you know, a lot more people to be eligible to receive the vaccination so that we can continue to, you know, move past, um, you know, COVID-19. One of the reasons I asked, I was surprised Drew Holiday the other night said he still feels the effects a little bit, you know, in his lungs. You got over it pretty quickly, didn't you? Or did you kind of still feel it a little bit um, with your getting your wind back and that the the endurance when you got over yours? Uh, no, I was pretty good. I think the, the only thing that got me was obviously taking the time off, right? Like, so, but it, I don't... I mean, I think it would have happened whether it was COVID or not. Like if I, after the season, I usually take two to three weeks off. If I had jumped right back into playing as many minutes as I was playing right away, I, my body probably would have felt it. My knee probably would have flared up a little bit, things of that nature. But, um, you know, I was fortunate. It was something that it took me longer to test negative and get over. But, um, you know, it wasn't something that lingered with me for very long. Thank you. Steve McGargy. I'm just wondering, obviously y'all have a very different kind of bench this year than you had last year. With the moves y'all have made now, where do you think y'all are in terms of depth and bench strength now versus maybe this time a year ago or two seasons ago? You know, I think, uh, you know, I think management's done a great job. I think, you know, ever since the inception of the bench mob, we've had a pretty good bench and we have a pretty deep bench and have had that type of depth and, I don't think that's changed. You know, the faces have changed uh, in some instances, and the type of player has changed in other instances. But for the most part, I think our depth is still there, and I think we're still in a position where, as the bench mob, we're ready to have um, you know the starters backs, and we're ready to come in and perform and do the things that we need to do: the hustle plays, the toughness plays, the energy plays, the execution plays, all those things that uh, you know the bench mob has always prided ourselves on, and uh, on different nights part of the bench mob will finish the game and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, we just want to make sure that uh, we're complementing that starting unit as best we can. And just from your perspective, what makes people from having played against him, what makes PJ such a good defender? Obviously he has that great reputation on that side of the ball. I mean, toughness, toughness, 
the the makeup of his his body. I mean, he's able to guard multiple different positions. He's able to move his feet laterally really quick, especially for a guy of his size. He's able to you know get lower than guys in the post and make sure that he doesn't get pushed off the spot. Uh, he's loud. He talks. He's um, he thinks the game. He's just got uh, a lot of different aspects to his game that makes him a great defender that will be very helpful for us and especially for our second unit. Eric, name? Um, Giannis is listed as doubtful with a left knee sprain, and I don't want you to speculate on the injury or anything like that, but I I'm curious for you, when I see him suffer an injury or LeBron suffer an injury, I just kind of think like, ah, they're going to be back the next game. They feel somewhat superhuman in that way. What have you seen from Giannis that allows him to just kind of handle an injury and just be like, well, nah, whatever, like I'm fine. Uh, work ethic. You know, I think a lot of people, and, and maybe I've been around the NBA for a long time, so I could be wrong about this, but I feel like the misnomer is when you get injured, you need rest. Like your body will heal itself. And what I've seen since I've been in the NBA is that's actually the opposite. You know, the when you sprain your ankle, you ice your ankle. I, I don't know if I've used ice since I've been in the NBA. Like, it's movement. It's working out that swelling. It's flushing it. It's getting physical therapy. It's doing things to put the ankle in a position to re-strengthen itself. And that work ethic that Giannis has, you know, if he is ever nicked up, banged up, like, for some people, it would take a while to come back from. For him, he's in the gym the next day, and he wants to do things and put his body in a position to get back to not just that same strength he had prior to the injury, but to be even stronger than he was prior to the injury. And um, that's what's been most incredible for me because, you know, for a lot of guys, I don't know if that is the case. You know, sometimes you get injured and you do try to take a few days off. Um, for him, he's back at it. He's in the training room. He's in the weight room. He's doing things that will put his body in a position to be better and farther ahead the next day. The, the, the time to start recovery is like the second he has a nick. It's not three days later when he's feeling a little bit better. All right, great. Thanks, Pat. No problem. Thanks, guys.